morning. You're watching PA Harness Week. I'm Charlotte McBride. Racing's fastest pace half hour is starting right now. I'm joined by Heather Vitali, and this week we are talking with some of the biggest drivers in the sport, and we're going to show you some of the biggest races. Yeah, you know, our viewers out there, they have so many options on that remote control, and they decided to be with us. That's right. It. It's a great Saturday morning. Here's what you can expect to see in this next half hour. One of our most popular drivers reaches a milestone this past week. We have the race and the reaction. Plus more racing in the great Northeast Open Series from the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. And we'll talk with Yannick Jingra about his awesome finish in the World Driving Championships from Sweden. And we have racing from Harris, Philadelphia, and of course a blast from the past that is truly amazing. For this week's OMG moment, we are heading north of the border for the Pepsi North American Cup. This is the second elimination race. Why is this our OMG moment? Well, it features the one and only Tim Tietrich, and this is his 11,000th career victory. Coming into the stretch, and it's working on a mystery, trying to seal the deal. Tiger Hanover second, Stag Party third outside, Hanks tough. Deep stretch lead, working on a mystery, clear by a length and a half. Slap of the wheel, this late for good measure. And it's working on a mystery, coming into the final 16th of this one. Chalk up 11,000 wins for T-Trick, and chalk up a ticket to the Pepsi North America Cup final. Working on a mystery, gets to the front shortly after the quarter pole. Races like a favorite should, and he wins in a 149. By the way, he's the son of Captain Treacherous, which makes him also a Pennsylvania bred. Trained by Brian Brown, he ends up being undefeated so far for three starts this season. And as you heard announcer Ken Middleton, yes, this was Tim Tietrick's 11,000th career win. So we caught up with Tim to find out about this absolutely incredible milestone. Tim, not only did you become the youngest driver to hit $2 million in career earnings, but now you just got your 11 thousandth career victory what goes through your mind when you hit a milestone like that well it's an honor it's uh it shows uh, all the hard work that you put into this and uh to get you know some attitude attributes back and uh it's a big number you know not everybody's gets to do it a lot of people don't even get to drive 11,000 horses so i've been very fortunate this business gave me a lot of first yeah you know we gotta say from a small town in illinois right and you know it's a combination of talent, power, luck, and like you said, hard work. And that was instilled into you from your family, right? Almost definitely. Uh, we grew up on a farm and, you know, we uh, we didn't always have a lot, but we always had plenty, you know, so, you know, I couldn't give without my parents, you know, helping me out, leading me in the right direction, give me that work ethic. It's uh, made my job a lot easier being a driver because it does take a lot of work. Let's talk a Pepsi North America Cup, working on a mystery. He's got post four. How do you like your odds in there? I feel very confident. I've got a good horse. Uh, he went his elimination very well, um, 49, you know, you know, and uh, got home very good doing it. I have a nine-hole post. Um, now we get a good draw. You know, it's definitely going to be a tough race. There's some really nice, talented Colts in there. Um, Captain Crunch, um, Dexter Dunn's horse. Um, he's he's a very nice, handy horse. Um, so it's going to be a great race. You know, it's going to be a chess match to the first, you know, quarter mile, and then the best horse is going to win from there, hopefully. Well, congratulations again, and good luck tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. And just to give props to the other elimination winner for the North America Cup, it was Better's Wish in 149 and 3, driven by Dexter Dunn, trained by Chris Ryder. And now, of course, we know the million dollar Pepsi North America Cup takes place tonight in Canada. Okay, but you do not have to dig out your passport. You don't have to go up to the Great White North. Okay, all you got to do is go to Harris, Philadelphia, or the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono, and you can enjoy an incredible night of racing via simulcast. That's right. We still have a lot more coming up in this week's show. We do have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we have racing action, including top pacers in action in a race from the Great Northeast Open Series that you do not want to miss. Top of the stretch, Highlander dealing with Hitman Hill. Is luck be with you, and luck be with you is up and after the front, and some star somewhere tracks that move on the outside. At Mohegan Sun Pocono, the colors shine a little brighter, the meals are just a little tastier. And the slots, a little hotter. 
When you're here with great friends, the good times seem to last a little longer. And you just may feel a little luckier. Best of all, it's all a little closer, so you can shine on anytime you like. Shine on, Mohegan Sun Pocono. Welcome back. You're watching PA Harness Week, a racing's fastest paced half hour. Now we're going to head to the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono for some exciting races. This is race number eight. It's a talented field of pacers here, and the purse is $21,000. I want you to take a look at two horses in this one. The number eight horse, Scott Rocks. Better's favorite with a small drop in class. And then, of course, the number four horse, Nine Ways, with the king of Pocono, Georgie Knapp. Nine ways has a slight lead on Soho Wall Street. Three quarters, 122 and 1, 27 and 4, third panel. Nine ways about to clear Soho Wall Street. Meanwhile, Scott Rocks gets ready to swing out three wide, drawing dragons and Max Steady Blue Chip behind that. Top of the stretch, nine ways, slight lead. Inside opens up now for drawing dragons. Outside comes Scott Rocks. It's drawing dragons, nine ways, and Scott Rocks. Scott Rocks and nine ways, Scott Rocks. Another great call by announcer Jim Bavilia. Scott Rocks tucks in fifth and then makes his second over journey. Winds up coming home in 27 and three with Tyler Buter in the bike for Hunter Oaks, who was the trainer, and they win in 150 flat. Nine ways was second and drawing dragons took third. All right, now we head to the Great Northeast Open Series. The purse in this race, $30,000, and really there's one horse that you need to keep an eye on. It's Haya Later. It's the heavy favorite. Now, it's had almost a month off, but people don't seem to be concerned with this one. Take a look. Fractions are reasonable for these up front. It's I'm a big deal by a length, dealing with Hylator coming up on the outside and hitting top gear now. It's Hylator taking on I'm a big deal and taking the lead. Following that move, Hitman Hill is a length and a half away, getting backed up in fourth now. Sports column, same goes at the pylons for Have Faith in Me looking for room. Then comes Major Crocker at the back, Sweet Rock. Three quarters, 121 and 2, 26 and 3 on the back stretch. Hylator the lead, a half length. Hitman Hill is a threat right on his outside. Dropping back inside, I'm a big deal. Further back to sports, column fourth. Top of the stretch, Hyalator dealing with Hitman Hill. Just a head away now. Hyalator trying to find some more. Hitman Hill right up on his outside. Hyalator loves it when they get close to him. Hyalator fights him off and gets the victory by a head. Hyalator wins his sixth start. His sixth start out of his past seven races. Hello, and he does it the hard way here coming first up. He's got Rick Still in the bike for trainer Jenny Beer. They win in a 149 flat. Then we've got Hitman Hill taking the place spot and have faith in me. Took the show money. There are four divisions for the PA All-Stars for three-year-old trotting fillies. We're going to begin with race number five. I want you to take a look at Personal Paradise. This is the horse you have to keep your eye on. Personal Paradise still with an eight-length advantage at the three-quarter pole all by her lonesome in 123 and 1 28 and 1 third panel fractions have been uniformly steep so far but personal paradise not showing let up yet now Hanover's best starts to inch closer magical beliefs tips out third further back Sirocco down a hill fourth top of the stretch personal paradise leading by five and a quarter lengths as uh, in the on the outside magical beliefs is cutting into that margin quickly personal paradise looking for the line magical Beliefs getting closer, but Personal Paradise has a timed out for Ocas Fonstead. Personal Paradise not only sets a personal best with a 153 and 3 mile, but she also sets a seasonal record for a three year old trotting fillies. Now, it doesn't last for very long, and I'm going to tell you why a little later <laughs> in the show, okay? But still a very incredible mile with trainer driver Ocas Fonstead. Well, we're going to stay at Pocono for the PA All Stars. This sophomore trotting fillies in this one. It's Sunday, June 9th. It's race number seven. The purse is 30 grand. In the second division, the big favorite here, the number eight horse, Ice Duchess. She's also the richest in the field with over 400 grand in the bank. 
just as it's the Ice Duchess now in charge and pressure in the form of Run Lindy Run on the outside just a half length back for Corey Callahan and still getting closer to the leader. Swizzle Sticks who led briefly has that pocket seat in third to the outside Hall in the Clouds is fourth. She's three away. Big gap to AO in fifth and Lady Lily and also breaking there was Windy Corner. She's now well back uh, with Spring in Paris. Three quarters, 125 and 1, 28 and 1, third panel and all of a sudden the Ice Duchess opening up. She dusted Run Lindy Run who's dropping back. Swizzle Sticks second is still three and a half away and not gaining and Hall in the Clouds tucked in third. She's five away. Top of the stretch, the Ice Duchess pouring it on now. Her lead out to four and a half lengths. Swizzle Sticks continues to uh, fall back there with Hall in the Clouds third and the Ice Duchess. No problems tonight on the fast track. Remember how earlier in the show we were talking about Personal Paradise, how she went in 153 and 3, and that was a seasonal best for three year old trotting fillies? Was because enter the Ice Duchess. <laughs> so she wins in 153 and 2 for trainer Nancy Johansson uh, and does it so easily by six lengths. Now, Yannick Gingra was in the bike. Uh, Yannick, by the way, we will be talking to him about the World Driving Championship, so you don't want to miss that. However, Talking about Yannick, we also have to mention that he won another division of the PA All-Stars with Asiago, and that went 155 and 3. And then Millie's Possession won the other division, because there were four, of course, and she did that in 154 and 1, and that was with Dexter Dunn. We do have to take a quick break. On the other side of things, we're going to show you part two of Horse Racing's Pennsylvania Economic Impact, and we will check in with a few races from Harris, Philadelphia. Now moving out three wide, here comes Tac Tate and sign key advisor with no room. The world is full of compromises, but not here, not on this day, not in this race, not in this sport. Every bet is a hope. Return on investment comes in seconds. This is Harness Racing. We welcome you to the Harness Racing Fan Zone. See it all for yourself. Feel it in all the passion. Share that experience with others. The Harness Racing Fan Zone puts you in the driver's seat. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, changing lives since 1976 by providing unforgettable experiences while educating young racing fans. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, hands-on equine learning at camps across the country and driving exhibitions. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, providing scholarships, leadership programs, career and college information. Support the Harness Horse Youth Foundation. Log on to hhyf.org and find us on Facebook. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, growing our future with enthusiasm. Welcome back. You are watching PA Harness Week Racing's fastest pace half hour. In this next block, we're going to show you some of the greatest races this week from right here in Harris, Philadelphia. But before we get to those races, we got to talk about yeah. what's happening in two weeks. Oh my goodness, two weeks. You know what I'm talking about? It is a $2 million Sun Stake Saturday at the Downs of Mohican Sun Pocono. We have got the Lynch, the Hemp, the Ben Franklin, and of course our big centerpiece trot, the Earl Beal Memorial. You don't want to miss it. June 29th, you've got to be there. I know I'm not missing it. <laughs> and that, of course, is at the Downs of Mohegan Sun Pocono. And now we want to give you a look at where you can catch live racing this week. What time, where, when. Here's all the details, starting with the Downs of Mohegan Sun Pocono. There is live harness racing this week, Saturday and Sunday, with a post time of 7 p.m. Monday and Tuesday, the first race starts at 4 p.m. And at Harris, Philadelphia, Sunday racing with a post time of 12.40 p.m. Then on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the first race post time is at 12.25. Many of you might not know that horse racing as a whole has a huge economic impact right here in Pennsylvania. It employs many, many people from all different kinds of ranks in this sport, and we want to show you part two of how horse racing positively affects the economy. The Pennsylvania horse racing industry has a tremendous economic impact in the Commonwealth. Yes, thousands of people are employed at the state's six thoroughbred and standard bred racetracks. Trainers, grooms, jockeys, drivers, betting tellers, blacksmiths, veterinarians, and many others are employed at Pennsylvania's racetracks. But the economic impact of Pennsylvania's thoroughbred and standard red horse racing and breeding industry is much, much broader. The state's racing industry has created manufacturing jobs as well. One Pennsylvania company, Farmco, specializes in manufacturing horse feeders. 
Michael Beeler manages the family-owned company Farm Co. in Ronks, Pennsylvania. The manufacturer currently employs 14 full-time individuals, all from the local community. Over the past 10 years, we've increased our market share in the equine industry to about 25% of our total sales. We are constantly looking at expanding and we discussed how are we going to be able to create more sales and more models, more feeders and more product. The equine industry is a very important part for our growth and success both now and in the future. Farmco currently distributes its products through a mix of three distributors, 150 vendors and direct sales. The business that Farmco receives from the equine industry benefits other small companies in Pennsylvania as well. So as a manufacturer, we get to choose where we buy our raw materials and we choose to buy it locally. We see that having a big impact in impacting the local community around us. Transporting thoroughbred and standardbred horses between breeding farms, stables and racetracks have created demand for another manufacturing industry in Pennsylvania. We supply trailers to breeders, horse farmers. We sell to two individuals who are commercially hauling. EB Trailers opened its business in Pennsylvania in 1938 as a manufacturer of horse trailers. Thanks to its substantial growth, the company opened a second manufacturing facility in Pennsylvania and now employs hundreds of Pennsylvanians. Having a healthy uh, racing environment here in, in Pennsylvania certainly brings more business to us and, and along with that um, it also affects the breeders and, and the commercial haulers who are hauling into these locations. So um, yes, it has, it has a significant impact on us. Like Farmco, EB Trailers also uses local Pennsylvania-based suppliers. The state's equine industry also has an economic impact on the hospitality industry in Pennsylvania. For example, Pennsylvania has gained a reputation as the top location for standard bred breeding. That reputation is why the standard bred horse sale held at the Pennsylvania Farm Show Complex has become the largest standard bred auction in the world. This is huge for Pennsylvania and for standard breds and I tell everyone including our state legislators that this is one of the best kept secrets. This is a sale that people come to from all over the world and bring money to Pennsylvania buy Pennsylvania bred horses. It's awesome. We get an international crowd here. You know there's people here from Sweden, there's people here from France. We've even had people from Russia here before. So uh, it's, this is an international event and what it means to the economy of Pennsylvania is huge. Some people don't realize that uh, the horse industry is one of the largest agricultural industries in Pennsylvania. In addition to buying Pennsylvania bred horses, the global buyers who travel to Pennsylvania for the standard bred horse sale deliver a $3.4 million economic impact for the Harrisburg region's hospitality industry. Hotel people tell us that this is one of the biggest weeks of their year with people coming from Scandinavia all over the world and staying here keeping the bars open till late and uh, it's a big economic boon to the uh, to the state. According to economic studies, Pennsylvania horse racing and breeding delivers a $4 billion economic impact and employs more than 20,000 people in the state. No matter what jurisdiction you go to, it's going to mean jobs. It's going to mean employment for people. But the economic impact and job creation is likely far greater. The equine industry supports hundreds of farms throughout the state that supply hay, feed and straw. Pennsylvania's racing and breeding industry has also spurred growth for manufacturing and construction companies like Farmco, EB Trailers, King's Construction and many others. So the next time you visit a racetrack, keep in mind that the racing industry is a major driver of the state's economy with thousands of Pennsylvanians who rely on the continued success of horse racing for their livelihood. Now it's time to get back to racing. We're going to have some races from here at Harris, Philadelphia. Race number seven, the condition pace, four-year-olds and under. The purse, $14,000. And there's two horses I want you to take a look at in this one. Camp Beach That is looking for two wins in a row, the number four horse there. And the number five horse, Lions Johnny Jr. Been in tougher company lately, but looks very competitive here. Lions Johnny Jr. gets three quarters in 122 and leads it by a length and a half. Camp Beach That at the inside, second. Where are we unique?
driven without response. Third, coming up four wide is Western Exposure now. Three wide, Steinem's Beach. They straighten on in. Lions, Johnny Jr., Camp Beach, that is out for the drive. Two lengths back along the inside. War we unique third, but it's Lions, Johnny Jr. The clock's running out on Camp Beach. That down to the finish. Lions, Johnny Jr. Lions, Johnny Jr. wins in 149-4. and four. It was actually one of two sub-150 miles on the card that day. Jordan Napolitano was in the driver's seat, and he had one, two, three, four, five trips to victory lane on this Sunday here at Harris, Philadelphia. Finishing second was Camp Beach That, and third was Western Exposure. And staying right here at Harris, Philadelphia, race number 12, another condition pace here, also with a purse of $14,000. We're going to take a look at two horses into this one. The first, the number five horse, Dream Out Loud, just won here at Philly a couple races back. And of course, Caviar Reagan has the tough eight post and a huge long shot in this one. But trust me, he's the one to watch. On the lead, Mr. D's Dragon. Dream out loud on the outside. The threat second. Seven soap at the inside. Third, General Patton's gapped off cover. Fourth, three quarters, 122 and four. And now moving out three wide. Here comes Tactate. Inside, Key Advisor with no room. Top of the stretch. Dream out loud grinding. Mr. D's Dragon counters at the inside. They straighten away. Dream out loud on the outside. Takes over now. Mr. D's Dragon. Outside, Tactate. General Patton in between. Dream out loud's bearing out, but he's got him down to the finish. Dream out loud by three in the end. It was definitely a winning move for driver Vic Kirby, who pulls the right line, becomes first over with the Dream Out Loud, who is trained by Michael Marks Jr. in 151 and one, finishing second. The horse that Charlotte was talking about, Caviar Reagan, comes from way back. Okay, takes a place spot, and third was General Patton. While you're sitting there on your couch relaxing on this Saturday morning, you probably don't want to think, but we want you to think just a little bit. Just let those wheels spin a little bit. Here is our trivia question of the day. Okay, we're going to talk with Yannick Jingra later in the show, so I kind of wanted to get us in Jingra mode. Okay, Yannick Jingra has been the sport's leading money-winning driver four different years, okay? So the trivia question is, what was the first year? Hmm. Was it 2000? Multiple yeah, multiple choice. <laughs> 2014, 2012, or 1973? <laughs> we were doing a little, we, we want process. Let tell you for the last one. <laughs> but it's more of a 50 50 chance now. We yeah. said we don't want them thinking too much, right? That's so, right. You don't have to think too much on this one. <laughs> we will have the answer when we come right back, but we do have to take a quick break. We will, as Heather mentioned, have an interview with the one and only Yannick Jingra about his second place finish in the World Driving Championship. Plus, What's trending and our amazing blast in the past? It's all coming up. Clap if you see bluegrass up from the outside. Serious damage. At Mohegan Sun Pocono, the colors shine a little brighter. The meals are just a little tastier. And the slots, a little hotter. When you're here with great friends, the good times seem to last a little longer. And you just may feel a little luckier. Best of all, it's all a little closer, so you can shine on anytime you like. Shine on, Mohegan Sun Pocono. Welcome back to PA Harness Week. Before the break, Heather gave us a little trivia question on Yannick Jingra. It was multiple choice, but like you said, it's really 50-50. Let's get real. <laughs> okay, so the question was, Yannick Jingra has been the sport's leading money-winning driver four different years, okay? And so I asked, what was the first year it happened? Was it 2014, 2012, or 1973? Pretty sure he wasn't even <laughs> born in 73. We can uh, yeah. chuck that one. It was 2014, so he did it in 2014, 15, 16, and 17. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> we know Yannick, he's a pretty big deal, okay? He became an even bigger deal, if that is possible, when he represented the U.S. of A in Sweden for the World Driving Championship. First of all, of course, we have to mention that Yannick is in his civilian clothes today. <laughs> now, tell me, what was your reaction first when you found out that you are actually going to represent the entire United States at the World Driving Championship? Oh, it was definitely a great honor, you know. The, um, and I was I knew it was Sweden, so I, you know it's a place I always wanted to go for an extended period of time. So uh, definitely a great honor, and I was uh, glad they asked me. 
Now you finished second, by the way. Congratulations. Very cool. I know a lot of it was driving, but the experience as a whole, talk about that. Well, that's, no, of, of course, I want to get used to the tracks there and stuff, but the, the experience, uh, that's what it is. You know, the, you know, the camaraderie you make with the, the other drivers, the friendship you create, uh, you know, countries you see, it, it was great, all of it. Uh, we see some, so some nice racetrack, you know, outside of Solvala, like, um, like Lindersburg is more of a, a fair track in one way. It's only a 10 or 11 race day a year. Uh, no, unfortunately that day it rained there, but uh, we've seen a lot of nice racetrack, not the hotels we stayed at, they're not like our type of hotel, they were like castles and, and stuff like that. So that, that was really neat as well. I love that. And a lot of friendships made, right? Oh, no doubt. You know, I mean, a couple of the guys I knew already, but uh, new guys that w we've met and we've had some great laugh, uh, some late nights and you know, a lot of fun. Well, thanks for being on the show. And this is the first time that we see Yannick for a 2019 season. Will not be the last, I am sure. So thanks, Yannick. All right, thank anytime. Our blast from the past is from the Meadows Racetrack from March 24th, 2009. It's a triple dead heat. You got to take a look. TSM Golden Ridge. Clap if you see blue grass. Waits for the lightning lane. Timely topic on the outside. Coming to the wire. TSM Golden Ridge. Clap if you see blue grass outside. Tino Bus. To the wire. Five of them. TSM Gold Ridge, a serious damage, and Teen Elvis, love that name, yeah. <laughs> all hit the wire at the exact same time. They do it in 153 and 4. Now, this was at the Meadows in 2009. It was the 25th time that we have had a dead heat for three horses in harness racing history. Now, it's the 25th time. It's actually happened two times since. We've had it done 27 times. Now, at that time, it was the fastest, but there's been one faster since then happened at Saratoga in 2015 and it went in 152 and 2. We love to interact with you. So what's trending? Well, we are. Here's where you can find us on Facebook. You can find us at Harness Week. And on Twitter, you can find us at PA Harness Week. And of course, you can always find us on YouTube. And one of our viewers did find us this week. Yeah, this is so great. So one of our viewers from Tennessee, Sean Pennington, he wrote to tell us that his grandfather, whose name is Hobie Stroud, he was a harness racing starter for decades. So long story short, Sean saw the little brown jug blast from the past last week, told us about the starting car from 1961. That jug starting car is currently in his garage. We're like, wait, what? Okay, so Sean's grandfather bought this 1957 Cadillac convertible, kept it, restored it. The grandfather passed away at the age of 95, left the car to Sean. Sean still has it, and he says the car still runs great. It's only got 38,000 miles on it, so oh, how amazing it. We're talking yeah. about the little brown jug car from 1961. And it looks great, too. It's crazy. Great condition. So, yeah, thank you, Sean, for rating in, and we want all of our other viewers to get online and rate to us. We want to hear great stories like That's that. That's right. We love hearing from you. So please reach out, find us on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter. And of course, you can always watch us on YouTube. It's been another great half hour. Thanks so much for spending your Saturday morning with us right here on NBC Sports Philadelphia.